Hey everyone, Jack here with another update for the Papilio Shield project. And uh, today I just wanted to take some time and talk about um, what's so cool and exciting about FPGA technology. So uh, let's just talk at a, a conceptual level about FPGAs. Um, I'm going to avoid technical details and just really focus on the concepts. You know, the way that I usually like to go about it is to draw an analogy between FPGA technology and rewritable CD technology. And I think drawing the analogy really helps people to uh, get a quick conceptual understanding of FPGA technology. So let's start out by talking about CD technology. When CDs first emerged, there was no such thing as a rewritable CD. In the beginning, uh, we were all at the mercy of what producers created for us. We had no control over any kind of content on the CDs. Um, the only people that could uh, control the content of a CD were the companies that had deep enough pockets to be able to produce a master. Uh, and it was prohibitively expensive for anyone to make a CD with uh, just the resources that they wanted on it. And then came along rewritable CD technology, and it was revolutionary. It changed everything. Uh, no longer were you at the mercy of uh, you know, companies with deep pockets, but anybody could create a custom CD with just the music tracks or just the resources that you wanted. So you could make a CD that was exactly what you wanted, with the exact resources you wanted, and it wasn't expensive. And so it works the exact same way in the hardware world. The chips that we use in our designs also have static content or static hardware um, and that's because it's prohibitively expensive to create that initial master. So only uh, the companies that have deep pockets are able to control what kind of hardware goes on these chips. Um, and so if you want a specific solution, a, a specific set of hardware like an 8-bit microcontroller with a specific mix of peripherals, uh, if some large company hasn't already created that for you, uh, then you're kind of out of luck. And so FPGAs play the same role for the hardware world that rewritable CDs do for the CD world. Um, they allow you to, they act like a rewritable CD, uh, but they allow you to write custom hardware onto a chip instead of tracks onto a CD. Uh, so, you know, you get all the same types of benefits. Uh, you know, all of a sudden, uh, anyone can make a custom chip that has just the hardware that they want. So if they want an 8-bit microcontroller with a VGA uh, output and a USB host uh, and five SPI masters, it's possible to uh, actually generate that chip on a rewritable FPGA. So the other implication here is that since you're defining actual hardware, you know, the things that run inside the FPGA chip is actual hardware, it's not software. Um, what that means is that every peripheral that you um, create inside the FPGA is able to run at the full speed of the FPGA. And FPGAs can run very fast, up to 250 megahertz for, uh, for the, the chips that we're using. Um, so that means you can do really powerful things like, uh, you know, we should be able to do DVI output, HDMI output. Uh, you could do things that you would need a very, very, very fast processor to do uh, otherwise. And as a final illustration of, uh, you know, the types of things that you can do with a rewritable FPGA, you know, let's talk about an example of Pac-Man. Okay, so, uh, you know, the original Pac-Man arcade game, you know, they had huge motherboards that sat in these cabinets, and on this motherboard, they had various chips. You know, they had a Z80 microprocessor, they had uh, custom chips for audio output, custom chips for video output, they used certain types of SRAM, certain types of ROMs for the program code. Um, and, you know, they were huge. And so, you, you know, you fast forward to today, and we have the ability to recreate that entire motherboard with inside an FPGA. Um, and now, this is different from emulation. You know, we're not just using a processor and using clever programming to recreate 
um, the game, what we're actually doing is, you know, somebody has gone out there, someone that wants to make uh, an HDL implementation of the Pac-Man, they're going to go out there, they're going to look at that or original motherboard, and they're going to say, okay, it uses a Z80 processor, uh, uses this chip, this chip, and this chip. And what they're going to do is they're going to recreate every chip that's on that uh, Pac-Man motherboard. They're going to recreate it using HDL, um, and they're going to synthesize it on the FPGA. Uh, so when Pac-Man's running on an FPGA, it's the actual entire motherboard that has been recreated. All the chips, all the connectivity, everything on that motherboard has basically been recreated and is running inside the FPGA. It's totally different than emulation, and it's kind of mind-boggling to think about it, that we can take you know, all the electronics of, uh, you know, 20, 30 years ago and recreate them in a chip, you know, the size of a quarter. 